Roleplay Recon does not own any parts of the movies we recon, nor are we associated with the people who make them. Also, as a general warning, I'm probably going to do a cuss and talk about many mature adult things. The soundtrack for this series features music by the Pine Hill Hanks. Check them out anywhere you get music online. Previously on Roleplay Retcon does The Dark Tower. Um, you find a pocket on the inside of, his, of one of his vests and there is a folded up note. And on the front of the folded up note is a sigil of the good man. Uh, you see in front of you the most beautiful sight. It is Susan and she is on her horse and she is riding toward you. <laughs> I heard all of the shooting. I assumed you were in trouble. Are you okay? Jonas is going to be mad. He's going to gather whoever he has and try to find us. If there was a place we could get them all together and, and deal with them. Well, they were heading us toward the mayor's house. Yeah, I mean, maybe we beat them there and and set up, be waiting for them when they show up. I'm not going. I, I, I love you, Roland. And I would give my life for you, but I won't let you take it. I, I won't I won't be sacrificed to the Dark Tower. Lynn, I really thought better of you. But... If you're not going to put your neck out for the people of this town, do me a favor and get this boy out of here. And Alin takes Seamus' hand, and they walk into the night. Well, it's dark, and it's raining, and the moon shed a light. bonds with Alin, so we don't really have to um, worry about well, that. Well, I have a, a, a one point bond with Alin. Can I make that a oh. zero? You can. Um, unfortunately, you you can't. Well, here's um, here's my here's here's my reasoning for that. My one point bond for Alin is respect. I don't think uh-huh. I have that anymore. Okay, so we can totally um, we can totally change bonds. Uh, so for resolving bonds, um, you can change a bond. Um, so if you had respect for him, you can resolve that by no longer having respect, and um, you'll get a grit for doing this. But um, your bond either has to be one point higher or one point lower than it was, and it can't be zero. So if you had a one point bond with him with respect and you wanted to change that to not respect, then it would change to a two. Oh, interesting. So it gets stronger even if it turns negative. Oh, well, I guess it says less than zero. So it could go to zero if you wanted it to. I don't know. He he did take uh, Seamus out of here. So maybe I'll just leave it as it is. Okay, you'll leave it as is. Roland, how are you feeling? Uh, mine is trusted ally. I mm-hmm. don't think that holds anymore. Yeah. You know, he, he literally abandoned us right before uh, a, a showdown, theoretically. Yeah, right when you needed him the most. Yeah. So um, are you going to up that to, is it is it one right now? It is. Okay, are you going to up that to Two or take it down to zero? Uh, I think I'm going to take it down to zero because an, I think that if we'd only had half the conversation that we had last episode, it would be a two. But things kind of came around to a, to a, you know what, you're right. This isn't for you. This isn't for me. This will it'll be, only be more dangerous for all of us. So I think there's a uh, a lack of connection as opposed to a stronger dislike. Okay. All right. So what are you going to change this to? Um, so if I, I have zero points in it, yeah. and it's a Len, uh, I think it's just going to be called annoying acquaintance. That guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, uh, I think it's, uh, the man who for- was my friend, former apprentice. All right. Ooh. All right. Former apprentice. Okay, great. Um, go ahead and take a grit for that. All right, good deal, good deal. Okay, and um, uh, Susan is also uh, standing um, near you both, uh, crouched down. And um, after this, after this exchange happens, um, she looks 
she looks a little bit shaken and confused. Um, like you can tell that she's a little withdrawn and distant. Susan, I'm sorry you had to see that. We didn't get to tell you the whole truth either. We, the three of us, well, now the two of us, are gunslingers in training. It's simply not a way of life that's made for everyone. Luckily, he figured it out before he was tested and sent west. Gunslingers? Yes, that's why we were sent here, sent to find your father, because my father is the leader of the gunslingers, and he knew your father could be trusted. <laughs> Pity you all didn't get here a few days sooner, huh? Yes, it's very unfortunate. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Nothing could have been done, I'm sure. Um, This is a lot, but okay. I mean, okay. I'm still in it. Uh, and I think I look at Bert. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My name's Bert. How you doing? Hey, buddy. He was right, though. This doesn't have to lead us into a confrontation, necessarily. We know, at least in part, what the good man must be after. We passed all of that oil. Maybe it's enough to destroy the things that he wants instead of throwing ourselves into the wolf's den. It'd be an awful shame to give up all that oil. Yeah, I'm not sure how we could get it back, let alone what they might have on our side that could use it it's true that's true i expect they could find a way but uh i don't know uh roland this is your call bud i suppose if they're all dealt with the oil isn't an issue if the oil is destroyed and well and the horses obviously there must be after the horses yeah, yeah. The men themselves would still be an issue. Let's save a whole town of innocence. If there were to be any innocence to be had. There are plenty of innocents here. See? Keithbert? There's, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea why they would be going up to the mayor's house? They said something about to see if the mayor was ready. Yeah, you were sitting on his arm pretty hard this evening. Uh, he let anything slip? Um, as soon as you say that, she glares at you with almost hatred. I give her a um, big smile. She, she she pulls it back and, and shakes her head a little bit. And she says, uh, no. And I'm trying to figure that out myself. The mayor is not... He's not like some, I don't know, he, he's not smart or ambitious or cutthroat. I don't, I don't know what he would have to do with anything. This, this doesn't feel right to me. Well, he could be a witless pawn in this whole grander scheme of things. I guess the only way for us to really know is to go find out. I don't know that that's a good idea. If they're all going there, you don't... Well, we're not exactly going to go knock on the door for dinner. Uh, okay. Still. So, Bert, we've been there. We've seen the mayor's place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got real acquainted with their with their broom closet. What's the tactic here? There's just the two of us and a whole lot of them. I expect there's not much we can do until we get more information on the situation. I say we, we roll up quiet just to scope things out a little bit. All right. It'll be interesting to see how much you can gather without uh, without the rook. We lost our lookout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's 
He's looking after something a little bit more important right now. Okay, so we're just gonna head that way? You really think this is a good idea? Okay. I mean, if you've got a better idea, speak up, lady. You're right. This isn't... You're the expert, so <laughs> lead the way. <laughs> well, one of us is, anyways. Have you ever used a weapon? Yeah, I, I used to use a a bow when I was hunting with my dad. Do you have one on you? You know, I I must have left it in my other ball gown. Um, now that you mention it. Is she still wearing the ball gown, by the way? Yes, she left straight from the mayor's house over here. Y'all are also still wearing your party clothes. How bright is this ball gown? Oh, it's it's very bright blue. <laughs> Perhaps we should get get her a change of clothes at least. Um, is there is there any place close by where either I I don't exactly know where you live or if there's uh, some place close by where we could get you something? I expect she lives on the Delgado Ranch, which is a while away from here. <laughs> I mean, it's not that far, I guess. But I don't have my horse anymore. Um, but yeah, we can go there and stock up, I guess. I don't know where else I would get clothes from. There's that clothing store in town. We could probably just go borrow some clothes. If by borrow, you mean break in and, and steal clothes in the middle of the night? Yeah, sure. I mean, you'll, you'll give them back. It's all good. You'll, you'll, tr you'll trade him a nice pretty gown for him. Seems fair to me. I do imagine that gown is probably worth more than anything in that store. Okay. Um, what about weapons? Uh... Well, if we can sneak back to the bar, Alin's guns are still in there, hopefully. Okay, so this is the plan, right? So um, y'all are going to sneak, sneak her into the clothes shop and steal some clothes, and then you're going to sneak her into the bar and grab those guns and then you're going to go to the mayor's house right well i figure we'd i figure we'd split up uh her and roland could go to the clothes shop i could go get the guns and then we could meet up and then go to the mayor's house i know that you're gone but last night i dreamt you were here the sound of your laughter was so near to me in the room I thought you were here beside me Time will heal me If it don't cure me, it'll kill me Whoa, whoa, can't you see I'm hurting What I'm taking, it ain't working Cuthbert, you go toward the um, the bar, which you remember where that is, and y'all are actually not too far away from there. And um, why don't you like use stealth? Why don't you I will use. Stealth I'll use a stealth. Why not? Yeah, use stealth. A stealth sneaky is a sneak. A stealth is a body, I believe. We got a plus one to stealth. Roll on the table, dang it. <laughs> well, that's a four. Plus, <laughs> no. plus, plus one will be five. Okay. So, there's that. <laughs> there's that. All right. Let's mark another grit here. Yep, you get yourself a grit. Good job. Oh, hello, grit. Um, I'm going to need you in a minute. <laughs> well, you do a uh, a terrible job of sneaking. Um, mm -hmm. You're making all kinds of noise. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that you do this is you are trying to climb up the, um, the sheet ladder that's still hanging out of the window. And you Fantastic. get like about halfway up and the sheet um, rips from the top and you fall <laughs> right down on your back. Knocks the wind out of you. Um, someone in one of the buildings across the way, um, they definitely heard you and you see, uh, their light turn on. Uh-oh. I guess I'm going to try to, try to hide. 
All right, so roll me another stealth roll. I want to roll you another <laughs> stealth roll. Switch dice. Roll me a hide and go seek. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to know what it is? Yes. It's a four. <laughs> oh, God. You know you're supposed to roll my, two d sixes, right? My my dice do not like me today. <laughs> what these are you going to roll anything better? Those rolled something better. Oh well. So yeah, four. Apparently, I do not hide. Okay. <laughs> so um, you you see the lights come on I'm mark and another you. Grit. Yes, you do get another grit. Good job. <laughs> and um, you see another light come on, and and you just kind of you you start you start um, like running back and forth, just kind of pacing like really quickly, like oh where to hide, where to hide, where to hide, and there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you're just kind of like running back and forth in front of this person's window, and they open up their window and um, they look right at you, and they're like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Ma'am, I have, I have lost my horse. <laughs> I, I, I'm try. I was trying to find it. I was coming from the party, and there was a big commotion out here. I don't know what was going on. Uh, it, it, it spooked all of our horses. Something, something awful. And I was just, I was just looking for my horse. I, I apologize. I apologize for the disturbance. All right. Are you trying to bluff? Or are you trying to charm here? Let's say charm. All right, go for it. All right. Ma'am, I have lost my mind. <laughs> I've lost my mind. I've lost my horse. I don't know where my guns are. I don't know where I am, who I am, Jesus what I'm doing. Jesus Christ. Okay. So I rolled, I rolled a five, but I've got plus three to it, so that's an eight. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. So she's just like... Mm, and she stops and looks at you for a second, and she's like, oh, yeah, there was quite a commotion. I'm sorry, kid. Uh, run along home. Your your horse probably isn't here anymore. Go on, get out of here. You know, you're probably yeah. right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on a getting on. You, you get on a getting on, and she closes her window. <laughs> well, the doctor said, boy, come on, set you down. You sure look like you could use a cure I said, Doc, I'm a hurting way down If this don't work, I'll shoot another round And how much poison does it take To kill the memory of you And how much more can I ache Before she breaks right through all right, and then we go back over to Susan and Roland. I hope y'all do better than I did. <laughs> uh, Susan and Roland are also not super far from the clothing shop, as y'all are all like in the middle of downtown. So um, let's roll some stealth. Okay. Uh, Susan eight. rolled an eight. Oh, hey, nice. Me too. Nice. Nice. All right. Great. Um, so you two do a great job of sneaking up to the back of the clothing shop. Um, you look around, you don't really see anyone. Uh, Susan tries the back window and it easily lifts up. Yeah, I will help her in uh, and then follow her. Okay, great. All right, so you help her in and follow her. Um, it is real dark inside of the clothing shop. And I'm going to assume that you don't want to shine a light. Yeah, um, I think, boy, if I can sell you on this, I think I'm just trying to go off of memory from having been in here and bought clothing, like where stuff is located. Um, I don't know if that might be like a an awareness or... How about survival? Okay. Or, yeah, I'll let you roll survival slash tracking for this. Okay. That, um, so I'm, I got to track down pants in a, in a, in a top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, a, yes. in a sensible shoe. Uh-huh. Sen- Which is one sensible shoe? <laughs> That's all you uh, need. Okay, so so that is an eight again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm Rev. I can roll above a four. Look at me. <laughs> 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 all right. So, um... You start, you start just like 
making your way through the dark and just like pulling at things and and Susan's just like Roland what are you doing I was in here earlier and um I just that's something I can do when I when I see a place I can usually remember it pretty well these clothes may not have the best fashion sense but they should at least fit you and be women's clothing I think okay um so she just like kind of staggers toward you um because she cannot see at all like the the scarce amount of moonlight that is coming in through the window is just not enough for her and so she's got her arms out in front of her you know she's she's trying to grope her way through the darkness and um she she grabs onto you and she says okay give them to me yeah i do okay she says can you turn around uh yeah Okay, um, and she starts putting on the new clothes, and she says, "Yeah, wow, these, this works. Good job." Thank you. I, uh, I was going to say that I, uh, uh, <laughs> he's just flustered. <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I saw you, and I saw your body type and the clothes. Mm. <laughs> 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 She um she she stifles a giggle as much as she possibly can, and she reaches out in the darkness and she gives you a hug. Oh, uh, yeah, I will hug her back. Oh, thank you. Okay, and then she just kind of like grabs onto your shirt. Yeah, and yeah, she I says, will, okay. I'll take her hand and lead her back to the window. Okay, all right. So y'all get back outside. Let's go back over to Cuthbert. Cuthbert, how are things going? <laughs> well, I, I'd like to talk to you about uh, something real quick. All right, please do. I now have five grit. I you was sure think, do. I was thinking about spending those to increase my stealth by one point. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Given given that I've, I've failed two stealth uh, situations so far, so maybe that's some experience I can... I can put toward that. All right. Um, do it. Did it. Done it. All right. Great. Feels good. So, <laughs> all right. So you are, are you trying to get in the front door this time? Yeah, I'm going to try to sneak my way through the front door this time. Okay. Um, yeah, roll stealth. All right. Come on, dice. We've been through a lot together today. <laughs> You can you can roll better than than what we have been doing, right? Hey, that's an eleven plus two is thirteen. Good job! Look at you go! Yeah, no one sees you. You're like a ninja. You're like a ghost. I am. You one just sneaky with the sneak night. right on in there, and there are the guns right where you left them. So you can just scoop those S- back on S- up, and I'm not even going up. to have you. Roll stealth to get out of here because you were so darn stealthy. So you nice. managed to get back out, no problem. Now, whilst I'm going outside, are mm-hmm. our horses still tied up to the uh, to the rail? I am going to leave that up to chance. Chance Roll it up for it. What am I rolling? Just two d sixes. Yeah, just two d sixes. If you get a ten or a higher, I'll say they're there. All right. Double ones. No. No, your horses are not there anymore. Sorry. <laughs> All right, they took our horses. Damn. Yeah, they did. <laughs> right. So they thought you might be coming back for them. <laughs> they said not today. <laughs> not today, them wily gunslinger boys. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, so I abandon that quest and I go to meet Roland and Susan. Okay. Uh, you do that. Are you? You didn't really specify. I assume we're meeting back at where you left? Yeah, that seems like a good place to meet up. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say, sure, you guys managed to uh, make it back up to your hiding place where you were. Um, no problems. And as we see him coming, I'm like, this will be great. Once, uh, once Bert gets here, he'll have a weapon for you. Everything will be all set. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, hey, guys, why are we laughing? I don't know. <laughs> I do. I have to have a gun for 
<laughs> Great. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> I I do I do hand her one of the gunsman's guns and I keep a lens guns for myself though. All right, she takes um the gunsman's gun and then um she she looks up at Roland and she's like It's not much different than a bow, right? <laughs> ah, you've never have you even shot like a rifle or a shotgun before? Um yeah, I shot a shotgun a couple of times. Okay, okay, that's a that's a start. So it'll have a lot less kick than that, but you'll still want to use both hands and 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 steady yourself. Okay, okay, yeah, I can do that. Um, and I think that like, and this will be just a, a couple of of seconds, but um, you know, we're kind of up in the shadows of this of this uh this porch like is it safe to stand up here okay uh and i think i just take a moment to like have her hold the gun out and i put one hand at her elbows but like at the top and then the other hand on the pistol and i move her hand back kind of at the speed and force that i think that gun would kick at you know being familiar with a gun just so she ha feels at least some semblance of what the recoil will be like I realize that it will not be anything like the real thing, but it at least won't be a total surprise when it happens. Okay, so she braces herself um, pretty well, and um, <laughs> she uh, she didn't do a very good job, though. Um, she <laughs> <laughs> it surprises her kind of a lot, so she yeah. she falls back into you a little bit. Fair. Uh, place uh, are you are you left or right handed? Right. Okay, so put your right foot back behind you a little bit, uh, almost on the ball of your foot. Okay, uh, yeah, and then I'll try I can do it once that. more. Okay, and um, she was ready for it this time. She's got this. Okay. <laughs> One tip th that always helped a Lynn is is if you're right-handed, close your left eye and look down the barrel with your right eye. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, just like. Just like shooting an arrow. I can do that. <laughs> exactly. And let me just say that you having to fire that gun will be our last resort. They're, they're dangerous, and we will try not to have you in any situation where you'll need to use it, but it's better for you to have it and know how than to not. Also, there's this whole thing about shooting with your heart and believing in your dad, and it's a whole <laughs> spiel. We're not going to go into it right now, but... Just be thinking about it. <laughs> she kind of looks at you both to see if you're joking or not, and she really can't tell. She's just like, okay, sure, yeah, heart, dad, got it. Uh, so, yeah, let's head, not like on the road, uh, but kind of next to it, uh, back towards the mayor's house. Okay, all right. So, um, Susan has done her fair share of sneaking around for whatever reason. And um, she kind of uh, helps you guys to where she thinks would be the um, the stealthiest route. But I do still want to roll some stealth rolls. She rolled a nine. Let's do it. I got a 12. Ooh. I got an 11. Nice. All right. We are some stealthy mofos. Okay. Um, so, yeah, she's turns out she's an excellent guide at this sort of thing. Um, she she takes the lead, and, and you all slip through town without a trace. Well, while we're doing this, I want to tell Roland that they've got our horses. Hey, Roland, they got our horses. Oh. Uh, we'll have to get him back. Uh, you don't go through the front way because that would be silly. You sneak around to kind of the side of the mayor's house. And um, Susan kind of falls back a little bit and, and she looks at you expectantly. We're going to see what we can see before we make any decisions. Like peeking through windows and shit? Uh, something like that. I, I expect that we're we're actually still a ways from the house. We're, we're we're kind of viewing the landscape, as it were, seeing if there are a number of horses outside and 
and gentlemen smoking with rifles. Absolutely. Roll me some awarenesses. I'll do that. What is that? Is that mind or soul? Probably mind, it's huh? It's mind. Mm-hmm. All right. Get ready for some negative one action. All right. All right. That's eight minus one, seven. Okay. I got a six. Oh, no. Well. All right. Um. So... Roland, even you can see this. There are horses out front, um, but not just like a a ton. Not there aren't just like dozens. There are maybe like half a dozen horses in front of the mayor's house. Um, and Cuthbert, you um, you look really closely at like the house and everything. Um, at the front of the house, you don't. There's no one standing out there. You don't see anyone, like, around the perimeter. You don't really see anyone at all. Um, and the, the the all of the lights in the mayor's house are on, as if there was still just a regular party going on. But you don't hear any kind of merriment or see people walking uh, past the windows or anything, not from where you can tell. Well, there's definitely folks still here. Got half a dozen horses here. Nobody outside. We might could get a little closer. Do you want to scout? Yeah, I'll probably scout. With the lights on inside, it'll make them pretty night blind okay. to what's going on outside. So I think that while Cuthbert is scouting, uh, I'm going to go up and try to uh, get some of the horses and bring them back to where Susan is. You don't want Susan's help? Um, I just... Yeah, I suppose she's very good with horses. So yeah, I guess I do want her help. I didn't want her to get too close, but she's Rancher's probably better daughter. with horses than I am, yeah. She probably know a lot about horses. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll... But we'll basically go back to where we are now with them, so we're kind of out of sight. All right. More stealth rolls. Stealth rolls forever. <laughs> Well, that die is gone forever. Bye, die. Oh, where'd it go? No! Again with the no! Cuthbert! That's Alex! A, that's a five total. After mm. plus two. What? Why do my dice hate me? Why, mm. dice? I take such good care of you. Mm-mm-mm. All right, um... I step you... on a big old stick. How does <laughs> okay. how does aid work again? <laughs> yeah, so teamwork um, happens when you are working together as a team, and you get to add stuff to it. And I'm looking at it right now, and I don't. It says. Rolls plus attributes plus skill. I don't. And that basically, we all would roll, and then the highest. Oh, it's the highest count. of all rolls. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. I see. But since um, you and Susan are go off, you know, off in one direction, and I'm going off the opposite. I don't think you could help me. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, Roland, Susan rolled a five for stealth. What'd you get? Uh, I got a nine. Okay. Cool. So. She starts to stumble and make a lot of noise, and you you catch her and help her out. And you guys are real quiet. Okay, okay, sorry. And I'm um, over here going like da 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 sneak 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 da 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 da. Hey, don't look over here. I'm not sneaking. So Cuthbert has managed to make. So much noise, Roland, that even you heard him over there <laughs> um, <laughs> around the side of the house. So everyone is on high alert now. And, um, Cuthbert, you notice nothing happens. No one has come for you. No one tries to shoot your head off. Good. Bonuses. I like this. Uh, I try to compose myself. And continue to sneak, being a relative word. So, um, where are you going to? What are you? What are you trying to do here? 
I'm I'm trying to sneak up to the house to kind of peer into the windows. Okay, you get up to the house. We're just going to use that same stealth roll. Okay. Um, you you don't do it very quietly. So no. if someone wanted to, they would hear slash see you. And um, you get up to the windows and roll an awareness for me. Also, since you failed right. that, uh, don't forget you get a grit. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Thank you. I got one grit. Well, my awareness is a three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's, so a, that's another failure there. It is, so get yourself another grit there. Can I go find grit. some new dice? This is awful. This is awful. I have 12 D6s here, and they've all rolled under three. All of them? All of them. Except no. for that one 12 I rolled, yeah. But I didn't see nothing. No, you didn't. And, um, but you don't, you get up to the windows and you're making quite the ruckus and you just kind of like, you, you try to just peek in a little bit, but you're not even self-aware enough to, to realize that your whole entire face is within view of I'm just everyone inside. sticking my nose up against the glass. Yep. Yep. Fogging it up. You're. Yep, fogging it up. Absolutely. You've just got like a smudge there where your where your face was. I draw a smiley face in it. Okay, <laughs> you draw a smiley face in it. Um, but you don't see anyone. Which is weird, because if there was a party going on, this would be the party room. Alright, so um, Roland and Susan, uh, you make your way to the horses. Um, Susan has got that magic touch, and she soothes the horses before they even start getting upset. Um, and she quickly unties them and, um, and starts bringing them over to where, to where you all were hiding before. Uh, yeah, then I will kind of crouch down and wait for Cuthbert to come back. Okay. Um, Cuthbert, what are you doing, bud? Well, this is, this is freaking me out. There's nobody here and I've, I've made enough noise that like a platoon should be down on me. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I should probably go back to Roland and, and report my findings or lack thereof. Okay. Do it. I do so. Should I roll another stealth? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've already made enough noise. There's no, there's no point being sneaky at this point. <laughs> I'm going to get back up to five grit. It's happening. <laughs> okay. You know what? Go ahead. Roll me another stealth. Why not? Okay. Motherfucker. I rolled two ones. Oh, that's okay. How you is get this possible? <laughs> you get another grit. You're welcome. Uh, hooray. <laughs> but you're just like... <laughs> like you are roll just it. There's no one here. Roll it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> roll it. There ain't nobody in the house. You just like chose the noisiest and you just keep stumbling and like and like yelping and and then your like shoe gets in a mud puddle and it starts making that big loud squishy noise <laughs> and just like the, the loudest person in the world is you right now. This is why I don't like these games. There's there's just <laughs> I just I, I, these sixes hate me. Oh. <laughs> um but yeah, you make it back up there. No one does anything. Roland, I don't think I could have made more noise than if I set a rattlesnake loose in the hog pen. That was very folksy, Bert. Oh, that was a good one. Thank you. And nobody, nobody came out to see any of it. It's weird. The whole house is empty. At least the main party room where you, you expect a party would be. Well, where else could they be, Susan? Do you know where else that many people could go? Is there a basement in the house, maybe? There's the wine cellar, but I don't... I don't... It's not very big. It's just big enough for maybe a couple of people to stand in there, but not... How many were there again? Well, there was... There were half a dozen horses. So that's about six. Yeah. No, definitely not the wine cellar. I mean, maybe upstairs, but I still feel like they would have heard you. You were like the loudest person in the world. I mean, we could we could go inside the house, but I just I don't think anybody's here. This doesn't feel right to me. Unfortunately, the person who is connected to weird things going on around us laughed. 
<laughs> the son of a bitch. <laughs> um, how how anticlimactic of a thought. But if we can't find anybody, I would hate for us to be getting set up in an ambush. We should just leave. I I kind of <laughs> think of that. Like, the three of us should just go and then come back. We'll come back tomorrow. Everybody will be cooled off. You know, we'll just talk thing out over brunch. Well, I, I, I was even meaning like going back to Gilead and getting reinforcements. Oh, yeah. That'll, yeah, that'll work. I mean, we got lucky with the Thinny shortening our distance here. I don't know if we'll get lucky twice. You know what I'm saying? Um, can I look around now? I mean, now that it seems like we are are in no real danger of anybody either acknowledging that they've heard us or hearing us. I'm not sure which. Um, can I look around where the horses were at and stuff and see if there are recent tracks of like more horses coming or going or like if a bunch of horses were here and they've all left or if everyone should still be here somewhere? Here's a question. Were yes. any of these horses our horses? Hmm. Excellent question. Uh you didn't you didn't look. Well, I wasn't <laughs> there, here? So. Yeah, I just, Maybe. I grabbed, we grabbed three horses without looking at their faces. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't ask their names. <laughs> yeah, it was very rude of me. None of these horses yeah. have names to the desert. <laughs> um, the three horses that you have now are are not yours. Um, and I don't know, go ahead and give me an awareness. See if you can tell if the other three are yours. <laughs> grab the wrong three horses. Just grab yeah. the exact three <laughs> like, horses that were not ours. And the, uh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, I got no idea. That's a, that's a three. I got a nine. I'm these, I think these might be our horses. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Uh, and Keith Burt, you got a nine. You look over and you look real close and you can tell what you can tell what glue boy looks like. He's got like this splotch on his hip. That's the glue. And none of those none of those horses have it. Okay. Good. Oh, okay. I thought we were just gonna look over and see our horses just, looking at us indignantly. Just looking at us like with such hurt in their eyes. <laughs> Fuck come on. You were right there. What the hell? I no, was those like, aren't your horses. <laughs> Roland, Roland, save me. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Um, no, but um Roland, you also asked if you could look at like their track, so give me a tracking. Oh, and Roland, you failed, so make sure you give yourself a grip. Yeah, I've got six grip points. I feel like I should be doing something with them. Uh, okay, that's better. So that's tracking, uh, which is a plus one, so 11. Nice. Okay, so um, you look over and, you know, it's it's dark and you're still a pretty good distance away. Um, but oh, you're real I, I'm, good at I'm this. more than happy to go over there since it seems like <laughs> no one is acknowledging that we're out here. With that roll, I'm not going to make you, but oh, okay. you can if you want to. No, no, then I, I'll, if you see, just I'll do it be from here, yeah. Brave and go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I was just building up to it, you know. So you're real good at this, though. So from this distance and at night, you can totally tell that um, it looks like there are a lot of tracks going back and forth, in and out. And um, so there has been like a lot of commotion um, within the past hour or so. Um, you can you can really tell like where all of the party goers seem to come out in a rush. And then um, on top of those, you can even see like more tracks going in and out, in and out, in and out. And it seems like there are quite a few tracks fresher tracks that just kind of never came out. Hmm. So you can deduce I, that, that there are a large number of people in the house. Yeah. It seems like they should be here. Uh, I want to like start looking around behind us and stuff to make sure we're not being in, in, encircled. Sure. Um, awareness. 11. Nice. Nice. <laughs> So, um, you stand <laughs> so they're up everywhere. Yes, <laughs> you stand up like a like a 
like a gopher like popping a prairie out of his dog. hole. <laughs> like a prairie dog just like popping up out of his hole. Huh? You look, you know, 360 all, all the way around. And um, no, it doesn't look like anyone followed you. Yeah, there's, I mean, they're not like setting a trap out here. At least there's no one out here. There's a bunch of people who came here and haven't left. Well, Roland, when one plus one equals two, mm -hmm. I think my math is working decent enough. Uh, we might have to go into this house and see what's going on in there. You don't think there's definitely a trap in that house? <laughs> Susan says she doesn't giggle. She keeps her, her, her stuff together, unlike me. Well, I, di I didn't say we were going to use the front door. The mayor's house is out, like, by itself, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Boy, we could sure just set it on fire. <laughs> like, we, we wouldn't have to worry about it catching to other houses. Yeah, Susan but... just kind of looks at you in amazement right now. I'm just saying it's an option. I mean... I, I personally think I had a thing going with the mayor's wife. I don't want to set her on fire. Oh, Susan gasps beside you and she says, Oh no, the mayor's wife. What if she's still in there? She's definitely a good person. I'll say. <laughs> she looks sad. She, well, because she is. She's just sad. I'm, I'm, I'm saying we go in the house. All right. Put it to a vote. All in favor, aye. Aye. <laughs> All opposed, nay. Susan doesn't answer either way. Well, this was your one chance, Susan. Front door is probably not a good idea. There's a back door? Is there a back door? Yes, there is. Hmm. Hmm. That's probably not a good idea either. There's a door in through the servant side? Ooh, servant stores are always good in movies. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's try the servant's door. Let's make a circuit of the house, a full circuit, just to just look in windows and make sure there's nobody just there. How about that? Yes, great okay. idea. Yeah, let's make our way around to the servant's entrance. Y'all make okay. y'all go one pass, I'll go around the other way and we'll just meet in the middle. That's not. All right. Let's stick together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, the, the servant's door is on the other side of the building from the side that you all are on. Cool beans. So I assume you want to go toward the back of the building? Yeah, let's go toward the back of the building. Okay, so unless anyone is just itching to roll some stealth rolls, I I'm am. not going to make you... Okay, do it. Roll stealth. I think we should do it as a team. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So <laughs> please, let's do it. <laughs> team. What did you roll? I rolled a six. Nice. I guess I could spend a grit to make it a seven. <laughs> uh, if we're if we're doing it as a team, it yeah, doesn't let's, matter. Uh, let's see I what got, else. I got a seven. Okay. Well, Susan got a ten. Hey, oh, there we go. Susan. She, she knows the house. She knows the house. Uh, so, um, you all are <laughs> trying to go around the back. Um, Alex, go ahead and give yourself a grit point for that. Hey, hey, grit. How Even you doing? Even though that was a team effort. I'm going to go ahead and give you a grip for that. I appreciate it. Um, so y'all go around the back of the house, and Susan, again, does her best to, like, take you around the, the shrubs and she, trees. She's and... just holding our hands, just leading us. Yes. Yes, she is. She's holding both of your hands at the same time, and like um, like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. And um, so she's leading you all around the back of the house, and... Nothing really is going on in the back of the house unless anyone wants to roll awareness. Yeah, I'll I do mean, it. Yeah. Okay, roll. Hey, there is a nine. Uh, I got an eight. You two do notice that there are some tracks in the back here. Um, from the back door. Which way do they lead? Um, the freshest ones are leading out. Out, away from the house. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Um, can we see anything in that direction? Like, what is away from the mayor's house? Um, so behind uh, his 
his house. Um, there are some trees, and there it like it turns into like a little forest, uh, but not like a huge one. And then further on, you see a mesa. And do we, do we see any signs of anything out there? Any light? Any movement? Um, you do see the tracks, and they seem to be going into the tree lines, but you don't see any lights or any movement or anything. That's not toward the thinny, is it? Mm-mm, nope. Well, that doesn't seem important. Let's go into the house. Okay, so you keep going around the side of the house. Um, you get to this side from the servant side, and um, more awareness rolls. Oh, what did you roll? Come back. <gasps> Double sixes. Sweet. That'll be an 11. Um, and I don't know. I was going to pitch this out there. Um, at any point, do you think this becomes like read a situation as opposed to awareness? Um, I could say, yeah, you, you could definitely read a situation. Um, because it's it's charged enough in that there are a lot of tracks going a lot of different ways and you feel like there are people somewhere. Uh so yeah, I will let uh I'll I will let uh I will let your role stand for that. Alright, cool. So an eleven for read a situation. Did you do Mind plus awareness. Uh, my my awareness is zero, and my mind is minus one. So twelve minus one is eleven. Okay, cool. Um, so you get to ask three questions, and I will tell you the questions if you like. Yeah, I'm not finding them. All right, where's my best escape route? Way in slash way past. Which enemy is most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my enemy's true position? And who's in control here? And if you have another question you want to ask, you can let me know and I may or may not accept it. What's my enemy's true position? <laughs> All right, your enemy's true position. You can tell based on the information that you have gathered that there are... Um, definitely some enemies in the house, and judging by the fact that you haven't seen anyone in any of the windows, they are upstairs. However, um, you also know that there are some enemies in, they went into the tree line, um, into the woods, um, but you did not see them in there, so they are, they're gone. Those, those enemies are not there anymore. They're elsewhere. So the enemy at hand, there are enemies in the second floor of this mansion. Uh, what's our best escape route? From where you are, you are looking at the right side of the mayor's house, right? On the mm. right side where the, where the servant's door is. And um, so if you turned all the way around, um, <clears throat> there are some, some trees over there that would give you cover. And then... That would be your best way out, All your right. best escape route. And my last question is, mm -hmm. what is my best way in? You think that this is it. You think that the servant's door is your best way in um, because it's it's off to the side. And you know that once you go into the servant's room, um, it will be separated from the rest of the house slightly. And there are not a lot of tracks this way. Now I relay all of this to Roland. What in the world could they all be doing upstairs? Do you think they're just waiting for us? <sighs> well, they definitely would have heard me making a ruckus outside earlier. Uh, why they didn't come to look, I don't know. Unless they're preoccupied doing something else or they think we're dumb enough to come inside. Which we might be. But this is our best way in, if we do. And the other's headed towards the tree line. If we start a ruckus upstairs, they probably won't be able to get... The guys out in the forest won't be able to get to us in time to stop us. Yeah, I was just deciding whether or not it was them coming in once we got inside so they could sandwich us. Or if they're off doing something else. 
Well, we could always ask the folks upstairs. Either way, we'll find out. After you. Back in the hollow, that's up, Carlozo. Back in the hollow, that's up, Carlozo. No matter the name, you you still still feel the same. Hey guys, it's Alex. I It looks like I keep uh, failing those stealth rolls, so I'm going to make up for it by reading off a little bit of the break action here. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. I want to thank Rev, our special guest for this series. He's been an absolute delight to work with. You should check out his actual play podcast. Uh, it's a monster of the week called The Crit Show. Uh, They also do a stream called the Omniverse Chronicles, which has a bunch of guest DMs running short, original campaigns. It's it's all really cool. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I recommend you check it out wherever you can, you know, find podcasts and such. I also want to thank the Pine Hill Haints. They're on Spotify, Bandcamp, and probably about a billion other places. They describe themselves as Alabama ghost music, which I imagine is both scary and wet, you know, kind of like like humidity. It's just got a lot of humidity into it. Um, for this series, we've been playing Cowboy World by Wyan Lu. Um, I don't know if that's how you say his name, but it's spelled W-Y-N-A-N-D-L-O-U-W. So that's the best I've got. I want to thank uh, the Nerdsmith Network for having us be a part of their network. They're all a lot of really cool people doing cool podcasts and streams. They've got a lot of cool streams, uh, such as Monster Crush, Blood Rush, Shenanigans, The Land Above, all kinds of cool stuff. So check them out. Uh, It's nerdsmith.org. A lot of cool people. Go, go. Give them a listen. Um, We have a Patreon. Our Patreon uh, helps us uh, support the podcast financially. You know, buying domains, buying uh, art, and helping register music and stuff for the podcast. Uh, We use that money to basically do a lot of things behind the scenes uh, that we would not be able to do. Uh, for very long, just out of pocket. So we want to thank all of our Patreon members for, for helping us with that. You can join us for as low as a dollar a month, which will get you a special name into our Discord. It'll turn your name a whole funky color. I think it's green. Um, You also get access to bonus content, uh, deleted scenes, um... I do this whole series of randos. Uh, right now I'm doing um, movie reviews. We're, we're doing the... Uh, Universal has put out Fast Fridays. They're, they've put the Fast and Furious movies in theaters for free every Friday leading up to Fast 9. And we've been doing reviews on those and watching the movies and, and in person. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Another cool thing we're going to do right here is actually read off some of the names of our producers, uh, people who are our patrons. And I thought that maybe we should give you guys some, some recognition for that. So here we go with Keith Blaumer, uh, Cody Thompson, Mike Myler, Charles Welsh, and... Nicholas Blasius. That's all the names I've got for you today, but next episode, listen up for some more. Um, again, our next episode is probably going to be July the 7th, and it's looking like it might be the finale. So buckle in for that one, guys. Um, I'm not going to talk your ear off anymore. I'll let you get back to the action. Thank you for listening to us, and... Goodbye, kisses. Deep in the wood, I heard the hunter's horn. 
Deep in the world, I heard the hunters horn. The hound high, crying low until the morn. All right, so Cupert, <laughs> you open that door up. And um, Susan Shotgun, just instinct- right to the face. Right to the face. Um, <laughs> so you're dead now. And no. yeah. <laughs> um, so Susan instinctively just like grabs Roland ha- Roland's hand and just kind of like moves like real close to him because she is terrified. So, um, Cuthbert, you open the door and you see servants' quarters. There's like. Are there enough to make a dollar? There are four, yes. All right. So, not really. This isn't this, the quarters. I'm sorry. This is um, like a mudroom. You see a mudroom. Cool. There's nobody in here. It's just a mudroom. Uh, but there's another door that goes further in, which is closed. Let's keep on trucking. Yeah, I'm going to uh, grab Susan's hand and move it to my shoulder. Uh, just so that I have both hands free for my guns. <laughs> okay, all right. She complies. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll have I'll have my gun out too. Okay, great. Um, she looks at you two pulling your guns out, and she pulls her gun out too. Nice. Okay, so are you going in through that other door? All right. So you open that door. And you are in the servant's kitchen. And there's no one in here. Are there any cookies? You can look for cookies if you like. No, we got other stuff to do. Okay. Then no. All right. No freshly available cookies on the counter. We move on. Yes. (laughs) All right. Um... So Susan, um, Susan says, um, so there are, there are two doors in the kitchen and both of them are closed. And Susan says, if we go through that door straight ahead there, um, I think that takes us, I think that takes us into the hallway leading into the, into the foyer. Mm Mm-hmm. Here's a wild question, Mm. Susan. Yes. Does this house have a dumbwaiter? I think the waiter's really smart, actually. That's kind of really mean. (laughs) Does it have an automatic servant? uh, What? Does it have a little box in the wall with a pulley string that takes a box up to the second floor? Oh, Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yes, one of those. Yes, it does. Um, in the, um, uh, the, the butler, in the, in the butler's um, office, there's, um, there's one of those things in it. It just goes up. And I, I think his office is around to the right here, through, through, the, through the door on the right. I'm trying to think if there's a way we could use this effectively. Is it big enough one of us could get inside? I might fit in it. Roland, I got an idea. What's that? I don't know if you're going to like it. We could go upstairs the uh, the true honest way that God intended. And uh, Susan could go up in the dumbwaiter and get our flank. If you know what I'm saying. How would she get up there if we're not here pulling her up? Oh, you, it, the strings are on the inside. She could probably just pull it with her own hands. She looks like she's got strong arms. Oh, the strings go inside the dumbwaiter? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's like a pulley system. Like It's inside the, the whole thing. So listen, I've seen it in all the movies. It happens. <laughs> you keep saying that word. I don't know what that is. I don't either, but... Yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible idea. My only concern is crossfire. Make sure we're not shooting at each other. Uh, well, you, you and I are, are good enough shots that we won't shoot Susan, I'm, I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, I, w- I won't shoot anyone. Yeah, and Susan only needs to pop out if we get in trouble. Yeah, don't start coming up until you hear gunfire. Because we don't want them hearing you coming up. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good plan. What if I'm too late? If if gunfire is already happening, then I would be too late. It's be- But that's better than them having their attention on you. We don't want them opening fire on the dumbwaiter. Who's going to open fire on a dumbwaiter? Someone who hears it creaking up inside the wall when no one's moving it. <laughs> Seems like a cowardly and superstitious lot. They'll either think they're being snuck up on or, or there's a ghost, so they'll shoot at it either way. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what I'd do. Okay. <laughs> um, Roland, don't make me do this. No, you don't have to. Yeah, totally. You don't have to. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just a plan. Just a plan. Susan is going to, she's going to roll nerve. <laughs> Can I teamwork it? Um, yeah, if you want to teamwork it. See if you can get a 10 or higher. Roland, if you would like to also roll. Uh, I got a, I got a, I got a 9. That's one short. Uh, I got a 13. Hey, there you go. <laughs> All right. I got box um, cars. Susan seems like she's, you know, trying to like, like pep herself up for doing this. She can do this. She's got this. She's got you know, this. yeah, uh, she's. I mean, she's totally gonna be fine. And she looks over at Cuthbert, and Cuthbert, you. I give her a smile her like and a, a thumbs up. You give her a smile and a thumbs up, and she's like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, I get this." And then she looks over at you, Roland. I kiss her. just a second for just a second um she kind of like maybe forgets exactly what's going on and she kisses you back um but then she she stops and she's like oh (laughs) okay thanks (laughs) she's totally got this now she she opens the door um to go into the butler's office and she goes that away are y'all gonna go go ahead and go up the stairs Yep. Yep. When we get on the opposite side of the door, I give Roland a a little nudge on the shoulder. Like th- there you go. There you go. This plan better work. <laughs> oh, my 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 friend, my diaper buddy. <laughs> what could kill us? <laughs> let's go. Let's go get some bad guys. All right, so you guys go out of that door, and you um, you come out exactly where she said you would. You come out in the foyer. Um, there's nothing readily, like, obvious here, unless you wanted to roll awareness or something. Oh, for sure. Hey, double sixes. Eleven. Boy, I, I should just not roll when you do, so I don't waste it. Um, <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> nice. Um, so you both notice uh, there are lots of scuffs, um, like all over the place on the ground, um, lots of mud. It looks like people have just been coming and going, just just kind of in a, in a, in a frantic way. Um, and you do see some, some mud being tracked upstairs. And... It looks like there aren't a lot of mud tracks going upstairs, though. Maybe just, maybe just belonging to like maybe I don't know two or three people. It looks like the rest of them went out the back way. Well, somebody let the help off early tonight. Well, there's a trail. There is a uh, a trail. Let's follow it. All right, so you guys head on up to the top of the stairs. Y'all have been here before. You know that directly across from the top of the stairs, if you wanted to hide, it didn't matter. You couldn't because if the doors were open, whoever was in that room would see you. We've been here before. Um, 
But the doors are closed. Give me an awareness, though. I do want one now. That is a four. <laughs> uh, I got a 12. Guess who's back up to five grit? All right, Roland, you notice that there's like, coming out from under the door, there's like this weird, like pinky glow um, that's like leaking out of the room. And you hear, there is there is noise coming in from, from the other side of this door. And it, it sounds like, what did you get again? An 11? Uh, I got a 12. Oh, yes, a 12. Yeah. yeah totes. Okay, so, um, what you're hearing is, it sounds like the only thing that, that you can guess is the sound of stifled panic. It, it sounds like, like, there's, um, there's a lot of heavy breathing going on, and, um, maybe, like, even whimpering, but it is... This it's is where all the horses like... went. <laughs> Not whinnying, <laughs> whimpering. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's being it's being like stifled. Um, and what did you what did you have me roll there? Was that awareness or read a charge situation? That was awareness. But if you wanted to read a charge okay. situation, I thought, I thought you said read a charge situation. Um, yeah, I think I'm trying to figure out like from that glow. You know, you said that there were a few sets of footsteps heading up, so I want to get a sense of uh, if it sounds like there's just a person in there, multiple people. Okay. Um, I'll let you have it with that role. Uh, what are you wanting to ask? Do you want me to read those questions to you again? Uh, what should I be on the lookout for? All right. So um, you know that there are not a ton of people up here, but... You have a point in weird, yes? Your weird senses are tingling, so you should be on the lookout for something weird. Okay. Pink light, I mean, you don't have... They they have, like, you know, um, electric light here, but pink light? I mean, you've never seen that before unless... I don't know. And, and it's coming from so evenly beyond it. You, You're on the lookout for something otherworldly maybe uh what's my enemy's true position they're deaf on the other side of that door these tracks go straight through there no tracks come out they don't go into any other rooms in the in the upstairs and uh who's in control here not you yeah fair whoever is on the other side of that door seems to be in control <clears throat> yeah they're 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 holding the high ground. They're waiting for you to come to them. Yeah. Well, I guess we can go for the old shock and awe approach. Uh, yeah, I think I I look at the door and I look low uh, and indicate to to kick the door in. Uh, but to stay low once it's open. Definitely. In fact, I think I'm going to do a little maneuver called the sliding tackle. Where I'm just going to run down the hall and then slide feet first into this door to knock it open. Oh, nice. Great. Great. Roll me in athletics. All right. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> I do have five grit now. It's... That's a seven. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you you, you look over and and Roland's kind of like you know he's gesturing kind of low and like you know trying to calm you down and you're just like I got this man I got this and so you just start barreling th down the hallway. And you slide feet first into the door. The door swings wide open. And in front of you, there is just a sickening pink light that is just oozing 
out of the room. And um, on the other side of the room, the first thing that you all notice is an open waiter with Susan crouched in it. And there is something green that is wrapped around her mouth. And she has tears flooding down her cheeks. And in the middle of the room, staring at you with the most devious grin, is a, a hunched-over ancient woman with a pink orb in her lap. Um, to her right is a tall, thin man also grinning at you both. And to her left, on the floor, is um, the mayor, and he does not seem to be looking at anything. Only I could take a wounded heart and give it three more wretched scars. Only I could best to cherish friend words I would someday amend. I am the low and crushing blow. I am the Monsters. Savages. Abominations. Eighty years ago, the great kingdoms of the land above drove all monstrous creatures from their domain and claimed the surface of the world for themselves. Those that escaped the slaughter were driven deep underground, banished forever into the lightless reaches of the dark below. In this endless labyrinth of stone tunnels and caverns, their descendants still fight to survive. And she's going to pretend that she's a fan of this dragon. She's going to be, she's going to say, um, Oh my gosh, I have heard of you before. And I am just so happy that you're actually real. That we actually found you. We've been looking for oh, you. that's flattering. I look at O'Neron salute and then go back into the shadows yeah sure make it look so easy I <laughs> she gets angry and she just finds dire and just tries to like attack them with it one of this creature's massive clawed hands grabs hold of your wrist the cub yet has strength come explore a world where sunlight is a myth and monsters may become heroes Discover new episodes of The Land Above every Monday on nerdsmith.org, Podbean, or wherever you download podcasts. A proud member of the Nerdsmith Network. <laughs>